Okay, the highest that I've seen in the last couple years that I personally knew was 13. I ran into a guy that took the lab 13 times. Uh, but most of the people I would say that we see uh, who work through, you know, who work through the material in a, in a organized fashion, who actually take the time to, you know, get the hands-on experience, you know, the max we really see it is is three times. I would say most of the people that you see on our website, most of them, at least since they came to us, I would honestly say it's probably about one or two. It probably averages about 1.7 attempts. Okay, we have people that come to us who, you know, who, you know, have taken the lab eight times. We've seen that happen. Okay, and you see these people out in the real world. You know who these people are. These are these people who throw around these, you know, these little trips, these little tricks and tips about routers and such, but you know, they're talking about little fancy tricks that they can do on the router, but if you ask them to configure a BGP confederation or a route reflectors or do route resolution, you know, that they wouldn't be able to do that part. But yet, you know, they can do a lot of fancy tricks to make sure you cannot log into the router, um, you know, for five minutes upon boot up or, you know, some sort of weird trick. And what happens is these people take this lab and they end up using this brute force attempt. So they go to the lab over and over and over again, then what they do is they buy every product on the market. I would I would say that on average, people who have more product, more CCIE preparation product, are the same people who take the lab, you know, multiple times, three or four. People who take the lab once or twice, those people pretty much they they grab one avenue, one source for preparation. Maybe a, a you know use a second source slightly, but they stick with it, whatever that source is. I'd probably honestly say that you could pretty much take any product out there, any vendor, and pretty much go through their whole product line, and you should be able to prepare and, and pass the lab using any vendor's products if you stick with it and you work through it. Now, some products may be you know a little bit better than other products, of course, or may have a little, a little bit different approach or may have a higher success rate, but at the end of the day, you know, pretty much any workbook that you buy, if you really work through it and dug through it, you can pretty much uh, pass the lab. The problem that people run into is these people doing these brute force attempts, they really lack the hands-on experience that they need for the CCI lab. Okay, when they're in a, a CCI class or they're in a workbook, what they want to know is, you know, you know they want to know all the gotchas, they want to know all the, you know, little stupid router tricks you can do, you know, they don't really want to spend time on, you know, core BGP, core route distribution, core multicast, core IPv6. You know, they want to spend time on, you know, show them something advanced like IPv6 to IPv4 conversion or NAT there, you know, something advanced. You know, they don't want to see something that's straightforward. And it's these people who have the trouble here. And they end up taking the lab multiple times. You know, I'll tell you a really good example. We had a student. He, he, attends our mock lab workshop and on Monday morning he's telling us how he is actually at at the CCIE lab location so he's in you know RTP he's got the lab the following Monday and what he's going to do is take our mock mock lab class to just solidify his knowledge about you know or his readiness for the CCIE lab he thinks he's going to breeze through it the guy honestly did not score above a 40 his, his average score was around 35. I mean, you know, and it, it was the kind of person that came up to us and he goes, hey, I've done 200 practice labs. I'm gonna pretty much just kind of be on the sidelines here doing your labs and it, it's not gonna be, a, you know, I won't be a bother in your class. Don't worry about me. I'm just gonna, I'm already at the lab. This is gonna be pretty easy for me. And you know, and it's, it's ex the, the same type of person. He'd already been to the lab like six times when we met him. And you know, he missed things like hub and spoke network uh, for OSPF, he forgot to set the priority. Didn't even know about you had to set the priority for the spokes to zero. So if you're doing a network type for OSPF that supports a DR, that's broadcast and non-broadcast, you need to set those spokes, or you should set those spokes, their OSPF priority to zero. You know, he was totally unaware of that. He was totally upset. Um, so, you know, you definitely don't want to get this kind of cocky attitude either that, you know, I don't really need to step back. I don't really need to go over BGP. I don't really need to go over OSPF. Just give me all these gotchas and these, these, these tips and tricks to pass the lab. That's the wrong approach. Cisco is testing your knowledge on the iOS. It's also testing your experience 
with the iOS. Experience isn't something easy to come by either. I mean, it, 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 to get experience, you have to get the hands on. Okay, no matter how many tips and tricks you know or how many gotchas you know, you know there is no um, there is no sort of replacement for actual hands-on experience. Let me give you a side note about gotchas too. I never use outside of this presentation right here. I never use the term gotchas. Gotcha. The way I look at it, it's a piece of the technology that that causes you trouble because you don't understand the technology. Okay. If you understand the technology and you understand how things work. It's not an it's not a gotcha. If you don't understand how the technology works, and you and you run into a problem, it's a gotcha. Okay, you know it's 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 a nice way of saying, you know, you're probably not up to this level yet. So let me just give you the advanced tips and tricks for this particular feature or this particular topic. Okay, so the correct way to the CCI lab. So the correct way here, you've got to pass the lab by having a good knowledge, a good foundational knowledge structure. You must know how things work. If you don't know how things work, you can't expect the CCI, expect to pass the CCI lab. You've, you've got to know, you know how these technologies work. You've got to know about OSPF. You've got to know how it works. You've got to know BGP. You've got to know route redistribution. That's what we spend so much time on when we teach. We, you know, we just recently put out a new boot camp class because we've spent the last three or four years focusing on teaching the technologies. And the CCI lab is 75% understanding the technologies. If you know the technologies and, and you have a basic strategy, you should be able to pass the lab. We put the boot camp class in so that people can really find out what they know and what they don't know and we also spend a lot of time in the boot camp class covering strategy okay it's a good example let's say I am going to take the voice CCA lab well, well what am I going to do to take the voice CCA lab I'm going to make sure that I understand all the technologies that are covered in the voice CCA lab so you know I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make sure that you know, I'm not learn when I when I'm ready to do a full scale lab or build a, compl a complicated network. I'm going to make sure that there isn't anything new that I'm exposed to in a full scale lab. You know, you want to make sure that when you get ready to do an eight hour lab, that you're you know as far as all the technologies covered, you have a good solid understanding. Meaning that no matter what layer two topology they give you, you can configure that layer two topology. No matter what you know, layer three topology they give you, you can configure that layer three topology. I mean, if you think about you know the additional features you can add on, yeah, you can make BGP a little bit more complicated. But the basic core BGP, there shouldn't be anything they give you in in the CCA lab that you can't just do off the top of your head. It goes the same thing with multicast. You know, everybody should be able to do basic multicast. And what I mean, build a basic multicast network. Yeah, you may have problems with MSDP or AnyCast or you know some advanced feature that's okay but you should be able to get through the basic portion of multicast the same thing with IPv6 if you don't have that knowledge and if you're in the CCI lab you know struggling with some sort of you know core route redistribution problem core OSPF problem core ethernet switching problem you don't really stand a chance to pass the CCI lab your number one goal when you're preparing for the CCI lab you want to make sure that the first things you focus on when preparing for the lab are anything that relates to IP reachability. Okay, anything that relates to IP reachability, that's what you want to spend your time on. Think about it like this. How many people you think pass the CCI lab that do not have full IP reachability? What percentage? Maybe less than 1%, right? Maybe someone doesn't have full IP reachability to like one router or one interface and maybe they could still get by and pass. But people who you know who are missing you know three or four networks or five or six networks or a big portion of their network or have routing problems or whatever you know those people they aren't you aren't going to pass the lab so you you know you don't stand much of a chance unless you can nail down the core networking portion of the CCA lab and I don't mean you can nail it down in eight hours that's not going to do you any good I mean you can nail down IP reachability within within three hours or four hours max. Because IP reachability, as you know, is going to relate to, uh, it's, it's going to take up about 50 to 60 points of the CCA lab. And you know what that's going to be, right? I mean, you know it's going to be Ethernet switching. 
you know with Ethernet switch, 